Thanks for staying with us here on News Talk. Bruce DeCoy with you on this Wednesday. Back to the affordable housing discussion in a moment. But first, since at least the days of the so-called moral majority of the early 1980s, Republicans and traditional religious leaders have opposed gay rights. Their opposition has been unwavering, and they have used it to boost their fundraising prowess. But now, signs that some, at least on the right, are starting to see things differently, particularly as it relates to same-sex marriage. Reporter Jim Hinch covers politics and religion for the Orange County Register. He joins us now via Skype from his home in San Jose, California. He wrote the cover story for the most recent edition of Politico, the magazine, which carried the provocative headline, Evangelicals are changing their minds on gay marriage and the Bible isn't getting in the way. Jim, it's great to have you with us this time. Hi, thank you. How did you reach the provocative conclusion that evangelicals are starting to do what amounts to a U-turn, a 180 on this hot-button social issue? Well, it was several things happening at the, the same time. Over the last couple of years, I noticed some new polling results from the Pew Research Center and uh, other uh, organizations showing that evangelical support for same-sex marriage has actually risen faster over the last decade in the United States than in any other religious group. And that kind of took me by surprise. I wrote a newspaper story about it, I think, uh, last year. And then uh, uh, late last year, early this year, um, a young man kind of came to uh, sort of prominence uh, publishing a book in uh, April called God and the Gay Christian. His name is Matthew Vines. He was at one time a student at Harvard, and he withdrew from Harvard when he, he had been raised an uh, evangelical Christian and uh, sort of, you know, kind of came to grips with his sexuality. He's gay and um, was in a lot of conflict about that. He actually uh, withdrew from Harvard a few years ago and kind of delved into scriptural research and Christian church history, kind of looking for a way to harmonize his faith with his sexuality. and. The place he came to was the conclusion that, in point of fact, a lot of the biblical passages relating to sexuality have not been uh, well understood uh, by the church, especially sort of the conservative uh, evangelical wing of the church. And he kind of came to the conclusion that, in point of fact, the Bible does not condemn committed monogamous same-sex relationships, and he has kind of started a national network of uh, evangelicals dedicated to spreading this message. And um, when I learned about him and his book, that kind of coupled with the, uh, the polling evidence kind of led me to start making calls and talking to various people. And uh, I discovered that sort of uh, uh, more broadly, kind of the whole evangelical approach to sexuality right. and especially the political issue of same-sex marriage is in the process of changing and appears to be changing pretty rapidly. So you're not talking about people who have abandoned their faith. You're talking about people who are... Uh, uh, reanalyzing, uh, re, um, uh, uh, rereading, and, 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 and coming to some different conclusions about a faith that they still maintain, it sounds like, quite robustly. Yeah, I think there's kind of a variety of things happening within the uh, evangelical community. I think among younger evangelicals under age 30, you find that the whole issue of homosexuality and same-sex marriage is much less of a sort of a strongly felt uh, issue for them. They may or may not uh, agree with Matthew Vines that the Bible does not outright condemn monogamous same-sex relationships, but many of them really don't feel like it's kind of the most important uh, aspect of, 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 of their faith. Um, and at the same time, even uh, older evangelicals who may maintain fairly strongly a sense that homosexuality is kind of contrary to uh, what is uh, what is written in Scripture and to the uh, will of God, uh, nevertheless, they just kind of lost their appetite for the political fight against same-sex marriage. I think they kind of sense that society has come to broadly... Uh, accept that, and they just no longer see it as kind of the most important thing on their their political agenda. Beyond beyond the, the one gentleman, uh, the author that you cited, are there others who have reached the same conclusion? Are there people who are known, who have followings, who have large congregations, who we can point to and say, here's a group that is 
uh, rethinking their stance on this issue. Well, yeah, their uh, sort of examples seem to crop up almost uh, every day. So there's a fellow named uh, Adam Hamilton, who's the pastor of a um, of a very large uh, megachurch. It's a United Methodist uh, megachurch um, uh, outside of uh, St. Louis, uh, who recently wrote a book kind of urging his readers to reevaluate their sort of whole approach to scripture. Uh, and he has devotes an entire chapter in that book, kind of really coming to the same conclusion as Matthew Bynes. Um, uh, the pastor of a uh, Southern Baptist church in Southern California just um, about a month or two ago became the first uh, Southern Baptist pastor to announce that his church now um, is kind of welcoming to gays and lesbians. I think as uh, as he wrote uh, in an online, um, a, a, a kind of an uh, open letter uh, online, he just no longer agreed with traditional church teachings about uh, sexuality. I know that Matthew Vines was strongly influenced by a kind of a prominent seminary uh, uh, professor in Michigan who has written kind of a book like study looking into sort of a sexuality within within Christianity and also saying he, he, that uh, he really feels that conservative Christians have kind of uh, uh, misunderstood and oversimplified what the Bible has to say about sexuality. Um, even the lead singer of a popular Christian band called Jars of uh, Clay recently started a huge online discussion when he sent out a tweet a couple of months ago saying, you know, I just really don't see the problem with same-sex marriage. So you're kind of seeing it crop up all over the place. Jim, let's put this through the political lens for a moment. The, 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 the nexus <clears throat> between religious leaders and the Republican Party has been very strong for a, a very long time. There's been considerable overlap there. Uh, are we approaching a point where, and I know some in the Republican Party are starting to look at the demographics, they're looking at the numbers, they're thinking about the day, not too far down the road, when the, the folks we call young today, the 20-somethings and those who are even younger, when they are into their 30s and 40s and make up the sort of bulk of the middle of the of the population, and that is to say the voting uh, population for the purposes of this discussion, and the numbers don't work. Even though the GOP platform for, for many conventions now, many political uh, presidential cycles, has been as strongly anti-gay as it could be, are we approaching a point, perhaps 2016, maybe beyond, where it's not viable in a modern America to be anti-gay, anti-gay marriage? Well, I mean, I certainly think that there is a growing awareness within the Republican Party that this issue no longer has the same automatic traction that it did uh, uh, 10 years ago or even five years ago. Uh, just recently, the, the state Republican Party in uh, Nevada uh, removed opposition to same-sex marriage from their state party platform. Um, uh, college Republicans in Washington kind of issued an open letter to the national GOP urging them to do the same, just saying, that this is kind of a for for that for many uh, uh, young adults this is a, a make or break issue and if and if our party sort of maintains their opposition to same sex marriage we're going to lose an an entire generation I even think you're seeing some of the same dynamics at work within the evangelical community itself um, uh, right now sort of uh, younger evangelicals, kind of one of the political issues that they care most about is uh, immigration reform. It's very interesting this time, kind of with the whole recent push for uh, immigration reform legislation, the evangelical community was very strongly uh, involved in that. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's in total contradistinction to their position on the issue about uh, uh, eight or ten years ago, the last time immigration reform uh, uh, came up. I've talked to many, many, many young adult evangelicals who say they care very strongly about that issue and who find themselves kind of drifting away from the Republican Party. Um, it's not necessarily the case that they're becoming uh, Democrats on mass, but definitely that close alignment between evangelicals, especially younger evangelicals and the Republican Party is uh, beginning to fray. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had an article go viral like this. I was looking this morning. It's been retweeted or favorited, whatever, 15,000 
times. That's pretty remarkable. Yeah. Jim Hinge covers religion and politics for the Orange County Register. He's been with us via Skype from his home in San Jose, California. He wrote the cover story on Politico. The headline, Evangelicals are changing their mind on gay marriage and the Bible is not getting in the way. Jim, thanks for getting up early for us. I know you have two kids. You didn't get up early at all. Thank you very much for your time. We'll talk to you again. Thank you. Back with more News Talk in a moment.